Good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, this event today on the International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian People. Uh, Solidar together with Manu Pineda, Evan Inchir, and Margaret Auken uh, from the DEPAL Committee, jointly uh, with the European Campaign for the Recognition of the State of Palestine, are hosting this online conference uh, in the name of recognizing the State of Palestine, a precondition of, for peace and coexistence. On this day, not only the organizations and people part of the campaign will express their solidarity with the Palestinian people, it, be, it will be an occasion for us to hear testimonies uh, for those fighting for this recognition across Europe. And it's an occasion for us to engage with MEPs and, and uh, representatives to uh, discuss the opportunities and the obstacles uh, on our road to uh, this uh, objective campaign. Will express their solidarity. First of all, uh, some introductions. It will be, it and, will be and, and some housekeeping front. rules as we are now accustomed to during these webinars. Um, this meeting is recorded and live streamed uh, on our social media and uh, with our partner organizations. Interpretation is available in Italian, French, Spanish, and English. You'll find the interpretation uh, in the globe beyond. If you're looking at this on the live stream, though, this is unfortunately not uh, possible then you will have to make do uh, with uh, the languages spoken. Uh, but you use the symbol with the world uh, in the bottom. Uh, we have a great panel today with a lot of different voices, but, uh, and, and I would just like to caution everyone again, uh, the time constraints that we have. So please try to stick to the time indicated for you so that we, we give everyone the same space uh, and amount of time. And when you're not speaking, please mute yourself. And if you have any, uh, if you want to engage with us or if you have any questions, please use the chat box, box and my box. <laughs> and my colleagues will attend to you. Where are we today then? Very briefly about the campaign. As a campaign, we now represent over 100 organizations. So that we, we give a very diverse one. network of European-based uh, and national civil society organizations, trade union, uh, federations uh, at national EU level, as well as uh, individual um, politi politicians and activists. We have national platforms in Italy, Spain, Sweden, Belgium, and France. And we have Palestinian and Israeli civil society, trade unions, and journalists who have joined us in this call and in this coalition to push for the recognition of the state of Palestine as the 194th member, full member of the United Nations. The campaign, the campaign was uh, officially launched in, 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 on June uh, this year, and it's based on the following principles. That if we wish to be coherent with our democratic values and established international law, we're obliged to and responsible, have a responsibility to stand up against the annexation of the of Palestinian territories, calling on the Israeli government to respect international law and existing United Nations re resolutions. Secondly, the Palestinian people have the same right uh, of self-determination as the Israeli one. The Israeli state has been declared on the 14th of May, 1948, and recognized as a UN member 11th of May, 1949. It is now high time that its counterpart is acknowledged with the same right. This is the only solution in place to stop all forms of violence and discrimination. It's the base for uh, continued uh, conversations and dialogue Mutual recognition and respect for the two peoples would be the way forward, parting from an understanding of common security. Today on the International Day of, the Solidarity, of Solidarity with the Palestinian people, we open this dialogue with everyone present. And we have, we're very happy to have uh, representatives from the European Parliament with us today, responsible for these matters. Uh, I, I send a very warm welcome to MEPs Manu Pineda, Evin Inchir. Uh, let's see if Margrethe Auken, uh, she was a bit delayed if she has the time to, uh, she's are able to join for this first session, otherwise she'll join us uh, a bit later on. And uh, Mr. Luca Vicentini, ETUC Secretary General, who would uh, join us through a video message. Without further ado then, and without me taking time from all of you uh, who are at the center of this uh, event today, I will give the floor to, uh, I will start with 
this opening with our MAPs who have joined us to uh, in, uh, in, invite you all to this day. Uh, Manu, the floor is yours. Buenos días, querida compañero, querido compañero. Eh, lo primero que quiero es felicitar eh, y agradecer que hayáis convocado este, este evento. Este evento que me parece no solo interesante, sino necesario e imprescindible. Ahora se van a cumplir 30 años de los acuerdos de Oslo, lo que en un principio fue acogido con satisfacción por la comunidad internacional como un acuerdo que finalmente permitía al pueblo palestino acceder a su derecho a la autodeterminación a través de un Estado propio. A través de estas décadas, la parte palestina ha cumplido... Oh, it's, it's right. Uh, Palestine people have respected uh, its um, engagement. And uh, um, despite all that, uh, the international community and in, uh, the European Union, well, not only in, um, acknowledged uh, the, um, recognized uh, the Palestinian state, but also some trade agreements uh, have been signed. And those so European programs uh, have been devoted to Palestinian people, such as uh, the Horizon uh, program. Israel has uh, mm, signed the Oslo, uh, has used, exploited the, the uh, Oslo agreements in order to occupy the Palestinian territories. Uh, and uh, the Oslo agreements uh, are in a concession uh, given to the Palestinian people, supported by the Western countries, uh, uh, an agreement and well, a concession important in order to have a 68% of its territory in order to allow the creation of the Palestinian state in 22% of the um, remaining territory. Israel uh, did not respect uh, uh, this agreement. Palestine had uh, well, had been uh, criminalized uh, and uh, and uh, uh, movements uh, and organization have been criminalized uh, for not accepting this occupation of the European states and the European Union have a responsibility, which is really important uh, in, in, since uh, the European Union supported uh, this uh, solution to the conflict uh, with respect to the annexion of territories uh, and uh, well, uh, what, but now we, have, we are in a difficult situation, hence the importance of the European campaign uh, is really important. Uh, if uh, the European Union and the member states uh, have uh, defined a, a solution, so this uh, solution must be acknowledged uh, and hence uh, the importance of acknowledging the European, the recognizing the Palestinian state. Palest Palestine is going through a change and the Palestinian people have been really involved in this change so we have to we have to assess the new trends the new organizations of the palestinian people so uh, it's really uh, there is a repression by uh, by uh, occupying uh, force and the european union should do something and uh, the organization so uh, the european union uh, 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 finance uh, some organizations so and this is uh, and the message and the Israel wants wants you and to stop the partnership between the European Union the Palestine state the recognized in Palestine as a state is something really important but there are further measures which could be implemented by the European Union such as for example the suspension of the agreement the stopping of the agreement uh, between in which uh, uh, Israel is involved in the Horizon program because Israel, thanks to the European funds, uh, can develop tools in order to repress uh, the uh, the. Palestinian people, for example, uh, uh, Pegasus uh, Spywell, which is uh, which has been uh, useful for organizations, some organizations. So, uh, so 
um, so comrades, uh, it's really important to add uh, some elements, uh, uh, such as, for example, the suspension, the suspension, the stopping of uh, the partnership agreement uh, with uh, Israel or uh, the Horizon program. And uh, I think this uh, program, uh, the Horizon program, uh, could be something important in order to have Israel uh, uh, made accountable for the violation of the rules. So, so the contacts uh, that we have. Have, uh, established uh, with the uh, Palestinian organizations is uh, really important. Uh, really important. So Israel uh, should understand that we are not to. We we will not accept uh, its uh, threats. Uh, so and the things uh, like the things uh, that we saw over the last uh, weeks uh, are useful in order to boost international solidarity. Thank you for having me. Thank you for supporting this. Uh, for organizing and supporting this uh, campaign for the for the recognition of the Palestine state. Thank you. Mm. For your uh, sharing your perspectives on uh, what is needed now in the face of uh, also increased criminalization measures uh, towards uh, Palestinian and Israeli civil society. Uh, I'm very happy to now give the floor to Evan Inchir, uh, also, uh, of course, part of DEPAL, to continue this dialogue on the necessary steps forward and the contribution or so, both from the EU level and, and from member states. Inchid, please. Thank you very much, Mikkel, and thanks to Solidar for initiating this very important uh, conversation and campaign on their recognition. Peace all around the world requires all people's freedom. The recognition of Palestine was therefore a matter of when, not if for the Swedish Social Democratic government as one of the first decisions to be taken when entered into government back in 2014. It was and it is also a matter of respect for international law. It is a matter of trust in our multilateral systems, which are there to ensure peace and security for all people and not only uh, for some, or not only for one part. When stressing for a two-state solution with two democratic states side by side in peace and security in line with the internationally recognized 1967 borders, it is clear what kind of recognition we are talking about. We have since over decades recognized Israel and it is not one day too early, I would say, to also recognize Palestine. The road to peace, a peace is to ensure statehood for both countries, not only one part, the Israeli and Palestinian people deserve their share of peace, security, and freedom. As long as there is no two-state solution, unfortunately, we will see continued violence and violence uh, and violations against human rights and um, uh, humanitarian law. 138 out of 193 of the UN member states have recognized Palestine, but only nine out of 27 of the EU member states. I am ashamed. Recording in progress. Ashamed of. I am ashamed of the EU lacking leadership for peace in Middle East. The aim of the Swedish recognition was to revitalize the idea of recognition and to achieve a domino effect through more governments taking their share of responsibility to recognize Palestine. In the past years, we have several national parliaments, such as France, Greece, Ireland, Italy, Luxembourg, Portugal, and Spain, calling on their government to recognize Palestine. It is time for the governments to listen to their elected officials. As many of you might have heard, a couple of weeks ago, the support of UNRWA was on the table of the European Parliament again. One of the main arguments from the center right and the far right, and unfortunately, some members in other groups included, was to stop, uh, to stop the continued support was claims that the Palestinian Authority textbooks didn't include Israel in the map of the PA school books. Of course, none of them raised the issue of Israel not including Palestine in their textbooks either. What hit me the most though was which borders would they want Palestine to include in the textbooks? That my friends, I have yet not got, uh, got an answer on and I do not believe they would be able to answer it either. Because if it is the internationally recognized 1967 borders, 
then why are the same people themselves refusing to recognize Palestine accordingly or according to the same? And if they want one state solution, it would show their they would show their true face, which they, of course, do not want to show because they want to be able to continue undermining a two-state solution. A couple of weeks ago, a friend asked on a meeting, isn't it too early to recognize Palestine because it, would, it could lead to backlash? The answer is no, it's not too early but it can soon be too late if the everyday annexation is able to continue in silence and without anyone opposing it. Whichever stones we are turning, the answer is, recognition is the way forward for peace and security. And most of all, it is the right of the Palestinian people. It is the right of the generations of Palestinian children to have a home to call their own beyond a reality where you never know when soldiers of an occupying force can knock on your door. You never know when your home might be taken away from you or demolished. You never know when the bombs could rain down on you. I hope one day soon, Israel and Palestine, Palestinian children will be able to plan vacations to each other's countries, live side by side and play together. We, the grown up world, have an obligation to stop this violence that have deprived so many people their lives and destroyed millions of people's possibility to live a decent life. The time for recognition is not only today, it was yesterday. Now we need to do what Sweden tried to do back in 2014, to revitalize the discussion with the start to demand the before mentioned seven EU member states uh, listening to their national parliaments. EU can, can and EU must take leadership. Once again, thank you very much to Solidar for uh, initiating this campaign. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Evan, for your remarks and for this very clear encouragement uh, in line with the ambitions of the campaign. Uh, I now have uh, the pleasure to uh, welcome you and you made it, uh, uh, Margrethe, that's wonderful. Uh, MEP uh, Margrethe Auken uh, the, uh, on this topic as well, on the EU's role in recognizing uh, and advancing uh, the rights of Palestinian people. Margrethe, the floor is yours. You have five minutes. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you very much and thank you to everybody. It's really nice to see some of you, Louisa, for instance, it's so long time since I saw Louisa, who is my great, you know, uh, front runner from this year. And uh, uh, of course, of, uh, all the rest of you too. Uh, I, will, I will not uh, repeat what has been said, but there's two things. Uh, uh, the recognition itself will not solve the problem, but it might hopefully, uh, you know, mitigate the distrust that the Palestinians and many others have to the EU, just using, you know, uh, words and changing a little bit, are we alarmed, are we shocked, are we appalled, what are we, but we are uh, on this year, and uh, at least the recognition uh, gives uh, the Palestinians uh, some hope that we are serious when we are talking about the two-state solution, and it's not, not just a disguise for doing nothing uh, when we talk about it, and I still think it's very important because it's the international hook we have, and I really hope that we can uh, give it the credibility back again. And let me see here, tell here that I just saw the, uh, the Germans and their agreement, and it's extremely biased when it comes to their pinpointing violations of human rights. It's, they put all the burdens uh, on, on Palestine for the violence. And of course, that was, wasn't surprising, but it was uh, nevertheless uh, quite shocking. But I must add, in their paper, they stress again, they are in favor, they, they, they support the two state according to the 67 borders, and they uh, oppose the settlements. And with these two clear statements in this, from apart from that very biased paper, I think we also can... Y creo que también... Se pierde el okay. sonido, perdón. In, 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 some language is running into my language here. Parece ser que había un problema de interferencia de canales, entonces eh, no oímos bien a la oradora. Something wrong, I hear... 
aquí hay algún error, dice la misma oradora, que tampoco ella escucha bien. Uh, then uh, one thing more I want to add here, and then of course I'm looking forward to the further discussion. And I have said it before, I think that the Palestinians themselves are too passive here for the moment. Uh, you know, as far as I had, uh, have realized up to now, I have, hopefully I'm mistaken, uh, then, uh, you know, there is close to no cooperation between uh, the different uh, emissions in uh, the EU member states. Uh, when I've asked, what are you doing to network to make sure that you are addressing your uh, uh, the member states, governments, parliaments, not only your close friends there, and it's not difficult to convince the convinced, but contact the others and, and, and put pressure of na uh, nat national governments and make some common network, because I think it would be very helpful if we see the Palestinians themselves being uh, active on this year, not only cancelling elections and uh, what they, uh, you know, not they, what, uh, uh, what the PA top does. But uh, here, I really hope that you could tell me that it's only in Denmark and a few others, they don't cooperate. And you have seen lots of good cooperation among the Palestinian uh, uh, ambassadors. I hope so. Uh, but apart from this year, I think we should put pressure, we should recognize Palestine so we can at least send that signal that we are serious behind it and this has been at the table for so long time and thank you to sweden sweden still are still you know standing on their <laughs> they are still here so uh, and i would just add i think the two other states who has recognized in europe is iceland and and the vatican and all the other european recognitions are before the fall of the war as far as i know Uh, so uh, we need to be really to speed this process up. But I'm looking forward to the debate and thank you very much. Thank you, Margrethe, and, and sorry for the uh, sound issues uh, during the presentation, perhaps. Um, indeed, as a first uh, and vital step to ongoing uh, continued work, uh, this will be um, uh, the recognition of the state of Palestine. Palestine is uh, crucial. Of course, not, of course, not sufficient. That's a very important reminder to us all uh, in, in this campaign, of course. Uh, we are now ready to hear a message uh, to the meeting from Mr. Luca Vicentini, ETUC Secretary General. I think we're ready for the uh, video message, yes? Dear colleagues and friends, 74 years ago, on 29 November 1947, the United Nations adopted the Resolution 181 on the split of a mandatory Palestine. In these same 74 years, the situation of the Palestinian people has consistently worsened, despite several attempts to talk about peace and more than 200 UN resolutions. The Palestinian people remain under the yoke of the Israeli occupation, and as the 2020 UNCTAD report pointed out, unemployment in Palestine has reached its highest level recorded since the past 15 years uh, and COVID-19 now devastates Palestine's already shattered economy. Friends, last May, during the most violent clash between Israeli and Palestine since the Gaza war, the European Trade Union Confederation and the International Trade Union Confederation urged the EU Commission, Council and Parliament to act decisively together with the Quartet in favour of peace in the region. And we welcome the ceasefire signed on the 20th of May. However, this constitutes a short-term solution and can only bring temporary peace in the region. Violence will resume on the first occasion, as it did in 2009 and in 2014, unless a proper long-term solution is found, one that will secure a peaceful future for the region. Reason why, in June, the ETUC decided, together with the ITUC, to support this campaign for the recognition of the state of Palestine as an essential step towards peace for all workers in the region. Presently, 139 out of 193 members of the United Nations have recognized Palestine. Nearly all African, Asian, South and Central America, ex-USSR and Eastern Europe countries. 
However, apart from Sweden in 2014, none of the so-called old EU member states did. As provided in the treaty on its functioning, the European Union and its member states have an obligation to promote respect for human rights in all areas of its external action, as well as an obligation to develop common policies and actions to consolidate and support democracy, the rule of law, human rights, and the principles of international law in all fields of international relations. In December 2014, the European Parliament voted for a resolution recognizing the state of Palestine. In 2017, another European Parliament resolution was adopted. This reiterated its strong support for the two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict on the basis of the 1967 borders, with Jerusalem as the capital of both states, with the secure state of Israel and an independent, democratic, continu contiguous and viable Palestinian state living side by side in peace and security on the basis of the right of self-determination and full respect for international law. In July this year, Israel's Foreign Minister Yair Lapid addressed 26 European foreign ministers in his speech to the EU Foreign Affairs Council expressing support for a two-state solution between Israel and Palestinians. And on October 27, the High Representative of the European Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Joseph Borrell, reiterated in a meeting with the Palestinian Prime Minister the EU's continued committed commitment to a just, negotiated and comprehensive resolution of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict based on the two-state solution and the need to relaunch meaningful negotiations in order to revive the peace process as soon as possible. Borrell also stressed the EU's concerns on continued settlement expansions, demolitions and evictions, as well as the dire humanitarian situation in Gaza. He added that listing six Palestinian organizations as terrorist organizations by the Israeli Ministry of Defense was another matter of serious concern. Friends, to conclude, the peace process is stalled. The ETUC believes that there is momentum for the EU and its member states to show leadership and to lead with urgency a diplomatic initiative that aims to achieve a just and sustainable resolution of this long-standing conflict. The new American administration, the European Union, its member states and other members of the international community must therefore support serious talks between the concerned parties with the aim of reaching peace, equal rights and trust in the region through a two-state solution. This is the fundamental demand of the international and European labor movement, and the recognition of the state of Palestine is a first clear step in that direction. We all stand for these demands and we are ready to mobilize to achieve them. Only when Palestine becomes an independent state existing alongside Israel in line with the relevant UN Security Council resolutions, its economy can flourish and its people, particularly working people, no longer have to rely on substandard employment. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh... ETUC and, and Luca Vicentini for your message of support and for uh, also underlining the relationship between the uh, uh, existence of viable, of viable and sustainable peace and uh, its impact or lack thereof for the labor market and for uh, the possibility to create decent work and decent life for workers in, in both Palestine and Israel. We will, in the program, we will uh, uh, now go uh, straight to point three. We'll come back to discussion with uh, Israeli and Palestinian politicians uh, to hear from a diversity of voices from Palestinian and Israeli civil society, as well as uh, Jewish and, and Palestinian uh, progressive forces in diaspora. Uh, Starting though with uh, uh, some few remarks from the International Trade Union Confederation's Secretary General, uh, Ms. Sharon Burrow. Sharon, very happy to have you with us. The floor is yours. 
Good, uh, good morning. And indeed, solidarity is critical. Global solidarity with the Palestinian people is the only strength that uh, will count in terms of achieving justice in what is a global scandal, a people under occupation now for, you know, decades. We already celebrated the 50th anniversary. I think we're up to 52 now. It has to end. Occupation must end. And indeed, the peace process at the moment does not exist. So yes, Europe, please step up. But also the UN has to step up. Governments everywhere have to both recognise the state of Palestine. It's exactly as uh, we heard. It's a, a priority, but it's not sufficient. But you can be assured that the global union movement, the ITUC, will continue to campaign for recognition of Palestine as a sovereign state. And that indeed should then underlie the trust, as uh, Margareta said, that is necessary to bring parties together in a peace process. Because security is in fact part of uh, the only answer, security for both people. But right now it's Palestine uh, uh, people, the men and women of Palestine, the working men and women of Palestine who are the victims. Indeed, in April this year, we released a report that exposed the grim reality of exploitation, wage theft, lack of social protection, occupational health and safety, Israel's um, continued occupation of Palestine and the illegal settlements are the root causes of the plight of these workers who have no choice but to depend on Israel for their livelihoods and household members. I've stood on those border crossings. I've seen the settlements many times. It's dehumanizing and the exploitation must end. But indeed, we also need the UN to renew the database on companies because we were very hopeful that when the database of companies operating in the illegal settlements was published, this would be the beginning of exposure and a campaign against those corporations, which also enabled us to argue that governments could not allow them to act with impunity in, in regard of such exploitation. But in fact, it hasn't been updated. And we know that uh, the, the many voices, many parliamentarians from Europe have supported this, and we need to continue to push that this um, database of corporate um, behaviour be updated. It's uh, for us, it's no surprise that uh, indeed the peace process is at a dead end, but we can't let it stop there. I fully agree that Europe's too timid, but so are other governments around the world. If people really believe there's a two state solution, then we have to see those governments stand up for the Palestinian people. And when Israel recently labelled uh, six renowned Palestinian human rights organisations as terrorist organisations, the world was very quiet. The world was very quiet. It was a shock to us. But again, it was this alliance that stood up with friends in political uh, it elected politicians, but unfortunately, too many governments were silent. So we know that there have been uh, initiatives from the EU. We know there have been initiatives uh, from, uh, from other governments, but too, uh, too little. We did also, uh, we have petitioned the, the UN to also start a peace initiative again. But without a just peace that's got fundamental human and labour rights at its base, I fear that the plight of the Palestinian people will indeed continue. Thank you, Solidar, for making this webinar possible. Thank you all for standing up in solidarity. I pledge the support of more than 200 million members of the uh, ITUC worldwide 
we will not give up. Recognise Palestine as a state, that's our first and, uh, and key demand. And secondly, governments of conscience must stand up within Europe and the UN and see a peace pro a process back on the table. But above all, the human rights and the labour rights of Palestinian people can no longer be ignored. And we petition all governments of conscience, but particularly the EU, to actually start to prosecute those responsible under international law. Solidarity and thank all of you. Thank you very much, uh, Sharon Boros, for your uh, the very strong uh, commitment of the ITC uh, to the cause of the Palestinian people and uh, for our shared efforts of, of the recognition of the state of Palestine. We will now move uh, to uh, a number of voices from, from Israeli and, and, and uh, Palestinian diaspora and representatives. And, and it's a pleasure to give the floor to Mr. Ilan Baruch, uh, former ambassador of Israel. Uh, Ilan, uh, the floor is yours. You have four minutes. I'm afraid we can't hear you. Still no sound. I think it's not uh, just me. Ilan, I'm afraid uh, I, I can't hear you. Okay, I'll, I'll we'll move on and then I'll come back to you later on. Eh? Thanks a lot and apologies for the um, troubles. Then uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give the floor then to Mr. Giorgio Gomer, board member of J.Call Europe. Giorgio, you have uh, four minutes, please. Yeah, um, can you hear me? It's working. Uh, I am a member of J.Call, which is a, an association of European Jews founded uh, actually now 10 years ago at the European Parliament on the basis of a, of a manifest. I'm from Italy personally. And JCO has sections in a number of countries, France, Belgium, Switzerland, Spain, Germany, et cetera. And I'm also a, a member of uh, uh, JLink. JLink is a, a world network of progressive Jewish organizations that includes Israel, Mr. Ilan Baruch and his group, and uh, uh, organizations in the US, Canada, Latin America and uh, uh, South Africa beside, uh, beside Europe. Uh, I find this initiative uh, very, very important. Uh, you can see in our documents and advocacy that we are against de facto annexation and, um, and the expansion of settlements. These are processes that make a Palestinian state with physical contiguity and, uh, and uh, economic viability and effective uh, sovereignty ever, ever more difficult. Palestinians have made serious mistakes, I mean, historically. Um, violence against Israel in 2000, from 2000 to 2005, the self-destructive guerrilla uh, war from Gaza, but they are now powerless. Uh, they are weakened. Realistically, you know, they are weakened by the conflict between Fatah and Hamas. They are split physically and politically between the West Bank and Gaza and the Gaza Strip. They are actually ostracized by significant parts of the Arab world. They are not citizens of the non state where they live, areas A and B of, of the West Bank under the PNA jurisdiction where they do not vote, unfortunately, as we are all aware since 2006, nor do they vote for the institutions of the state, so the state of Israel that de facto controls their daily existence. And the belief that is so prominent in Israel, in Israeli public opinion and the political establishment, that the conflict can be managed without being addressed and, and resolved, and the, the status quo is sustainable forever, is deeply mistaken, we think. And one can see that, you know, the, the human, one can see very, very easily 
very, very directly and openly that the human and material costs of the, of the non-peace are indeed very significant as shown by the uh, latest outburst of violence between Gaza and Israel that someone alluded to in a previous intervention. The killings that happen in the West Bank and East Jerusalem, the aggression by settlers to Palestinian residents in several parts of the, of the West Bank. And also, and also we see, we have seen uh, this year directly some of the perverse um, consequences of occupation on democracy and peaceful coexistence between Arabs and Jews uh, within Israel. So we think that recognition by European countries, as many of you have referred to, would be, first of all, consistent with the two-state solution paradigm that has been held steady by European countries for, for years. Now, it would be a symbolic gesture. Uh, let's look at things uh, frankly, because uh, you know, the control of territory <clears throat> would be limited to area A of the West Bank, which uh, represents 20% of, uh, of, the, of the West Bank. Uh, area B, as you know, is, is self-governed by the Palestinian National Authority, but under Israel's military power, and the area C is under occupation. Moreover, Gaza has no physical, no political linkage with the, with, the, uh, with the West Bank. And it is under Hamas control, a reconciliation process between Hamas and the PNA is a very difficult process. I mean, we welcome it. And, you know, with, with the hope of, of elections and a unitary government that would be upheld by democratic elections. But these, you know, are very long processes to, to happen. But in any case, in any case, even if, 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 uh, if the gesture were to be symbolic, we think that it would be important. In a sense, the conflict between Israel and Palestine would become a no more normal conflict between, between states, between two states, instead of, of a conflict between an occupier and a movement that is still linked, in a sense, to the guerrilla heritage of, of the PLO. And it would be finally, and this is my last statement, it would be in a sense, the completion of the 1947 uh, partition plan by the, by the UN. And it would be, and uh, uh, from our standpoint, this is not a marginal, uh, a marginal effect. It would be also recognition by the world of the legitimacy of Israel within the 67 borders. Including, including by Arab and Islamic countries that are still opposed ideologically to the existence and legitimacy of the Jewish state. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Giorgio, uh, for, for this statement uh, and for the work of, of Jay Cole and Jay Link on these matters. Uh, and I think the final point is also a crucial one, uh, the mutual um, benefit of, uh, of common security that is then possible uh, as a way forward um, by, by this first step, uh, be it um, uh, for all realistic matters, uh, a symbolic one, but symbolic gestures have a tendency also uh, to materialize um, along, uh, along the way. So thanks a lot. Uh, I will then give the floor to uh, Nidal Fukaha, uh, Director General of the Palestinian Peace Coalition, uh, the Geneva Initiative. Uh, Nidal, uh, the floor is yours. You have four minutes as well. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, good afternoon from uh, Ramallah. As the first Palestinian speaking, actually, I feel uh, super uh, proud to see this uh, solidarity from different friends in Europe. So I'm so thankful to all MBs, current MBs and former MBs, as well as representatives of different uh, civil society and political groups in Europe who are uh, showing this strong commitment, actually, to the recognition of the state of Palestine. As we all know, friends and comrades, that the International Day of Solidarity 
has been originally uh, created to remind us that there is the question of Palestine, which is still unresolved. And there is the Palestinian people, which is actually still remaining under occupation, which in fact, the only people uh, which is still under occupation, despite the fact that there will be there were a long uh, peace process, which started from early 1990 and until today. And unfortunately, it led us to nowhere for the different reasons which we all know. However, as a group who are meeting today, and uh, for all of you who represent different political groups, we believe there is a lot of things which should be done. Since the solidarity by itself as a statement, we believe won't be sufficient actually. And uh, as the statement always should be connected with the certain acts or with the certain more advanced statements. And in this regard, whenever we talk about the question of Palestine, we should speak clearly about ending the occupation because without the end of occupation, the different aspects of the Palestinian lives, which you all mentioned actually, whether the aspects that relate to the civil life or democracy or uh, issues that relate to corruption or even the issue with Giorgio mentioned when it comes to the West Bank and Gaza cannot be solved while there is occupation or at least the occupation will remain a major impediment actually to uh, solving or fixing all those issues with the occupation always make a strong contribution to it. And we just noticed a couple of weeks ago, this Israeli intervention in the Palestinian civil life uh, by announcing several Palestinian organizations as terrorist organizations. The reality on the ground is extremely difficult. We are all aware about the situation in Jerusalem and uh, the developments which took place last May are still in the horizon. And the fact that there are so many Palestinian families who are threatened actually to be evacuated from their homes, uh, even much more beyond. We all know that within the context of the Middle East peace process, the starting point was 242 and 338, which at the end of the day, considers and uh, deals with East Jerusalem as an occupied territory. And for the Palestinian people, for them, it won't be possible actually to have the two-state solution without having East Jerusalem as the future capital of Palestine. So the issue of Jerusalem will remain extremely important, which should be defended by all of us. This notion of Israeli settlement in the Palestinian territories is the main risk which threatens the concept of recognition as well as having an independent Palestinian state living in peace and security along with Israel. Because if you leave me no geography and if you leave me no space, then unfortunately you are pushing me into a completely different reality, which we all know. The question here will be whether there will be the space for us Palestinians and Israelis to live as neighbors or to go to any other option, which even in my own point of view is not an option at all. The option is a one state. And the question here, whether Israel and whether the Israelis are really willing to go for such an option at the end of the day if they won't leave us Palestinians the space to have a state of our own. With all these risks and with all these uh, complicated circumstances, I believe even now with the absence of the United States, 
unfortunately, even you know, we had at some time some hope that with uh, the return back of the Democrats, there will be a resumption of a meaningful process. We believe now even Europe can push for such a track and can make it a sort of reality. And we believe Europe also has the resources which can make it a major political player, even when it comes to the peace process and when it comes to negotiation that will lead at the end of the day to an independent Palestinian state living be side by side in peace and security with Israel. And this would be the best translation and reflection actually to both the solidarity with Palestine as well as the outcome of the uh, campaign to recognize the state of Palestine. Once again, I would like to thank you all, in specific, the uh, campaign to recognize the state of Palestine as well as Solidar. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nidal, uh, for your intervention uh, uh, on this matter. Uh, I would then like to uh, give the floor. Uh, Ilan, are you ready to uh, give it another go? All right. Another go, uh, Mr. Ilan Barouche, uh, former ambassador of Israel. You have four minutes, my friend. Uh, thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Perfectly. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Um, we are calling for the European recognition of Palestine now. Any delay undermines whatever efforts are necessary for the um, promotion of a peaceful resolution of our conflict. I see that we are over 100 participants, uh, which uh, makes me very uh, excited about our participation. And so I want to greet all European parliamentarians, Solidar officials and campaigners, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, one word of introduction. I am a retired diplomat, Israeli diplomat. I resigned 10 years ago on grounds of principle. And since then I chair the policy working group an Israeli advocacy team uh, that is working on the idea of uh, promoting the two state paradigm. And I'm honored to speak uh, in this festive event. And uh, I want to shed light on uh, another aspect of our uh, issue uh, on our hands. Uh, we are obviously calling from within the Israeli society, joining, joining you in the call for Europe to recognize Palestine as an independent state, which entertains national sovereignty over the land designated to the state of Palestine in all relevant Security Council resolutions, particularly Resolution 2334 of December 2016, which specifies with distinct clarity what is required for a peace agreement leading to the final resolution of the Israel-Palestine conflict. The curse of our conflict is the vast disparity between the two protagonists, Israel and Palestine. Israel is far too strong to have any appetite to compromise its nationalist vision and its unilateralist approach. Palestine is far too weak to be able to negotiate on its own. It actually has nothing to offer to Israel that Israel cannot take by force. And uh, there is, uh, that is why we have no negotiations. By definition, two adversaries moving into a negotiations room with such a disparity cannot hope for positive results, regardless of how honest any honest brokers will be. Israel's overriding advantage in its military, diplomacy, economy, science and technology is driving back home 
a political agenda of unilateralism. Israel embraces unilateralism as no other country. Israel is grabbing more and more land, creating facts on the ground that are detrimental to any future attempt to provide the Palestinian state the necessary contiguity to become viable. The ultimate objective of the Israeli governments in the course of time has been to defeat the Palestinian ability and will to resist, to resist its occupation. This entails human rights violations, forced evictions, house demolitions, and more. On the other end of the spectrum, the Palestinians are struggling to get the international attention required for any change in our trajectory. True, they have many challenges on, on core domestic issues, reconciliation between the PLO and Hamas, a delayed elections, the unsustainable economy, which relies primarily on donor funding. This has to change, but for a real change, we need to see a two-state agreement on the horizon. In this respect, the involvement of the international community, primarily Europe and the European Union is imperative. Ladies and gentlemen, the Israeli-Palestine conflict should be on the European agenda, part of the European strategic compass. It should be one of the neighborhood objectives of the European strategic autonomy. We are after all on the Mediterranean shores, which are so sensitively important for Europe. The resolution of the Israel-Palestine conflict should be regarded as an urgent European strategic interest. In this respect, comes our call on Europe to urgently recognize Palestine as a sovereign state and a full member of the family of independent nations. This will be a first move to help the Palestinians in resisting the occupation and to enable the Palestinians a parity of esteem on the international floor and self-esteem back home. This is imperative in order to level the field for Israel and Palestine in any future negotiations. Recognition leads to peace rather than peace to recognition. Recognize Palestine now. Thank you, uh, Ilan, and, and I want to say a special thank you to both you and Nidal for, for being part of the campaign already from the beginning and providing your support and insights uh, from your respective long um, commitments to, to this to mutual solution to this conflict. And so thanks a lot uh, also on behalf of Solidar and on the campaign for your commitment and, and dedication. Um, I want to give now... I want to give now the floor to uh, Ms. Esmeralda Naji, uh, General Union of Palestinian Communities in Europe, based in Switzerland. Uh, Esmeralda, you have four minutes, please. Merci bien, Michael. Chers amis députés européens, Monsieur Manu Pineda, Madame Evin Engir, Madame Margaret Oken, Madame Luisa Morgantini. Cher Monsieur Rauhe Fattouh, directeur du département des affaires des Palestiniens à l'étranger, chers amis de la Compagne européenne pour la reconnaissance de l'État de Palestine solidaire, Mesdames et Messieurs, le 29 novembre 1947, les Nations unies ont adopté la résolution 181 qui prévoit la partition de la Palestine mandataire with the creation of a Jewish uh, state and uh, the, the Arab state. Uh, today, more than 74 years later, the world has a duty to allow the existence of the state of... ...l'existence de l'État d'Israël. La quasi-majorité de la communauté internationale reconnaît le droit du peuple palestinien à l'autodétermination, d'autant plus que 137 États membres des Nations Unies ont reconnu l'État de Palestine qui, de ce fait, a obtenu le statut d'État observateur près les Nations Unies. Cependant, les droits inaliénables 
du peuple palestinien à l'autodétermination et à l'établissement d'un État indépendant et souverain sur les frontières de juin 1967 avec Jérusalem-Est comme capitale ne sont pas toujours réalisées. Le peuple palestinien, à l'instar de tous les peuples du monde, a des aspirations légitimes. Celle de vivre en paix et en sécurité dans un État où les enfants palestiniens pourront aller à l'école sans peur de retrouver leur maison démolie à leur retour par des bulldozers ou avions israéliens, où les mères et pères palestiniens pourront espérer que leurs enfants bien-aimés auront un avenir promoteur sans être en menace permanente de mort ou de dé détention sur les multiples checkpoints de l'armée israélienne qui parsèment leur parcours, où les paysans palestiniens pourront récolter les fruits de leurs oliviers sans que ceux-ci soient détruits par les colons israéliens. Est-ce trop demandé Nos amis à travers le monde, votre présence nous donne de la force et de l'espoir. La force de continuer notre lutte pour la justice, la dignité et la paix. L'espace, pardon, excusez-moi, l'espoir de voir le jour de notre indépendance s'approcher à pas géant, car nous sommes confiants que notre marche est la vôtre. Notre espoir est aussi le vôtre. Ne nous laissez pas seuls face à l'injustice. C'est pour cela qu'à cette occasion de la journée internationale de solidarité avec le peuple palestinien, nous, l'Union générale des communautés palestiniennes en Europe, ainsi que l'ensemble du peuple palestinien, nous exhortons la communauté internationale et en particulier l'Union européenne à reconnaître l'État de Palestine. Seule la reconnaissance des deux États concernés pourra donner lieu à la réalisation de la solution de deux États vivant en paix et en sécurité. Tous ensemble, pour que l'État de Palestine voit le jour. Je vous remercie. Merci à vous, Esmeralda. Uh, thank you very much for your intervention and for joining us today. Uh, let me then now... Uh, move to a video message, the second one of today from Mr. Dylan Williams, the Vice President of J Street uh, of the United States. Um, Alba, if you please. I'd like to thank the European Campaign for the recognition of the State of Palestine and Sergio, Mabel and Georgia for this opportunity to offer some thoughts today. In our quest to build support for a two-state outcome to the conflict, J Street is pleased to engage with those from around the globe who strive for a resolution that adheres to international law, rejects violence, and embraces self-determination, mutual recognition, and respect for two peoples, Israeli and Palestinian. In the United States, the political landscape regarding Israel and Palestine is shifting, both for the worse and the better. The administration of Donald Trump saw not only an open encouragement of settlement expansion and other acts of de facto annexation, but the unprecedented U.S. rejection of a genuine viable two-state solution and the embrace of a de jure annexation and permanent Palestinian statelessness. While the official U.S. position in support of two states and against acts of deepening occupation has been restored, Donald Trump's undermining of two states, embrace of the greater Israel movement, and denigration of Palestinian aspirations remains a growing trend in his Republican Party. In the American Democratic Party, we see a trend in a more helpful direction. Democratic politicians are increasingly understanding that the vast majority of their constituents, including supermajorities of Jewish Americans and Americans of color who make up some of their most progressive supporters, support the rights of Palestinians just as they support the rights of Israelis. The Democratic Party platform contains, for the first time, an express affirmation of the rights of Palestinians, as well as a clear statement of opposition to the ongoing settlement expansion threatening a two-state outcome. Yet obviously, words alone are not enough, as de facto annexation and other violations of Palestinian rights continue apace, even with Trump and Netanyahu out of power. That's why lawmakers from President Biden's own party 
are pushing for concrete steps against occupation and toward Palestinian statehood. New legislation in Congress, the Two-State Solution Act, would not only require the Biden administration to undo nearly all of the Trump administration's anti-Palestinian moves, but would further restrict U.S. aid and military equipment from being used by Israel to exercise permanent control over the occupied territories or to otherwise violate Palestinian rights under international law. And some mainstream pro-Israel members of Congress have also begun to discuss whether it would help lock in and bolster a two-state solution for the United States and its European allies to recognize Palestine as a state. At J Street, we believe that the United States government, at a minimum, should no longer use its voice and vote at the United Nations or in other international organizations to block Palestinian accession as a state. We also believe that the United States and other friends of Israel should consider the question of recognizing Palestinian statehood afresh in light of the recent development of Israel's new normalization agreements with a number of Arab-majority countries. Like Egypt's and Jordan's historic treaties with Israel, other Arab states' recent pacts show that those with strong views on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict need not performatively refrain from recognizing the legitimacy of one of its parties, nor deny themselves the benefits of engaging with it on a state-to-state -state basis. The United States and other allies of Israel should consider taking a page from these agreements and both capitalize on the regional diplomatic momentum they have created and preserve the possibility for a two-state solution by establishing state-to-state -state ties with Palestine. At a time when the two-state solution is considered by many to be on the verge of extinction, powerful countries acknowledging Palestinian statehood on a bilateral basis could provide a desperately needed boost to perceptions of a two-state peace's achievability. Joining the nearly 140 other countries that have already recognized Palestinian statehood would also further bind Palestine to international standards and obligations in key areas of security, governance, and human rights, and give major powers new avenues of influencing Palestinian leaders' conduct in those areas. The United States and European countries should carefully consider whether they are currently applying a double standard in which Palestine's partners recognizing Israeli statehood is regarded as good for the prospects of a two-state peace, while Israel's partners recognizing Palestinian statehood is deemed harmful. Only Israel and Palestine can end their conflict, but the U.S. and other countries can improve the prospects for them doing so by freeing their own relations with the parties from counterproductive constraints. Let me convey again J Street's thanks for the opportunity to share some of these thoughts and all our best wishes to you in your deliberations on this important issue. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dylan Williams, from this uh, uh, perspective uh, from the other side of the pond. Uh, now it's my pleasure to give the floor to Dr. Bassam Nasser, President of the Palestinian Community in Ireland. Uh, Mr. Nasser, the floor is yours. You have four minutes as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, um, Your Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for allowing me uh, for uh, take this opportunity this morning. Uh, and I'm very impressed by all my uh, colleagues who have been here uh, showing their support and solidarity with the Palestinian people. And uh, plenty of uh, political, uh, diplomatic and political facts have been mentioned ahead. So I think I want to just to veer a bit from uh, from the political world and try and basically convey the Palestinian people point of view as far as this ongoing plight uh, that has been uh, in presence and has actually influenced uh, plenty of dismay and hardship uh, to all of my Palestinian people, whether in Palestine or in diaspora. And I start with the, with the fact that today, as everyone has mentioned, it's the day of international solidarity with the Palestinian people. And I just wonder, what does that mean? In a nutshell, solidarity, as far as I'm concerned, it's not about handouts and giving aids and subsidies to the Palestinian people. I think we, and in any project, we have to put a time limit where this time limit has to be observed and has to be respected. And as we have seen, the, the, the partition uh, decision or resolution happened in 1947. And in 1977, there was a, a, a thankfully United Nations movement to basically have it and, and announce it as a, a day of solidarity. 
But I am, my understanding is not just making UNRWA giving handouts to my Palestinian workers. It's not about giving us subsidies and basically giving us uh, financial support. We have rights. The Palestinian people have rights, have rights to live in dignity, have rights to live in, in, in with freedom, with independence, uh, in accordance with the international law and the resolutions of the United Nations, which have we, we have respected and followed suit all along. Our president, Mahmoud Abbas, in the, in the last occasion he was in the United Nations, he said, we have followed suit with all these resolutions. Where do we go next? You, the world, this is the highest international arena to show and request and demand our rights to exist in humanity and to have our humanity respected. Nobody is listening. Israel, unfortunately, has defied all international laws. It has not, <clears throat> excuse me, has not abided by anything, no commitments whatsoever. It is considered a rogue state. Nobody seems to be the impunity that Israel is, is behaving with is second to none. We command and all your support. We command the international arena as far as seeing them supporting us, feeling sorry for us, and condemning what Israel is doing. Swallowing land, evicting people, destroying homes, taking people you know, away from their own families. This is what Israel is doing. It's the torture, it's the intimidation, it's the occupation. And when we defy that occupation, we become illegal. We have we become criminalized. This is what is actually happening. We, the Palestinians, were refusing the, the, the oppression, the oppression and the Israeli occupation. We become criminals. In my opinion, this is a day that we should really question our credibility as nations of the world. Have we done enough to the Palestinians? Have we done enough to relieve the Palestinians of their agony? Palestinian people have actually been suffering and nobody, and people still claim that we don't have self-awareness of this problem. One button of everyone who's listening to me today, press on one of the buttons that you deal with all the, the, the media issues that you have, and you'll know the full story of what the Palestinians have been going through for, for the last hundred years. I would love everyone to understand that the agony of the Palestinians is ongoing, not just political, but on the ground. I'm talking about humane issues and the human element of the suffering that the Palestinians have, have been suffering with has actually touched me and touched my own family. My cousin died while he was waiting with a heart attack while waiting to get through a, a checkpoint two years ago. In the last two and a half years, two years of COVID suffering, people have been deprived of their humanity even to get tested. Israel decided to target the only, the only lab clinic in the Gaza Strip that actually caters for 2 million people just to check and ins inspect them and investigate them and test them for COVID and there was no replacement. This is where Israel shows the ugly face of inhumanity. When we decided Israel was the first country in the world to actually get the highest number of vaccinations to its population. Yes, it never allowed the Palestinians to actually get that privilege. We were the lowest rate of receiving of the vaccines as far as the world is concerned. And when they decided to give us the vaccination program or to give us some the vaccines or darnos algunas vaccines, the actual stock of the program of vaccination, Israel to show you what sort of care they have for the people under their occupation and under their oppression. One other point, our criminal our, our, our prisoners are actually suffering like no, like the torture, the, the, the inhumane treatment of our, our, of our, of our prisoners. In the, in the era of COVID, they see them uh, and they, they don't give them any of their privileges. They're actually crowned. You see that happening as well with our workers going, trying to get into Israel for work. They crowned them into these narrow corridors without any social distancing, without any vaccinations, without any consideration to their humanity. This is just to show you, in the era of COVID, the Palestinians, they don't care. Or, I mean, they don't matter, I should say. Israel is the one that doesn't care. As far as I can tell you, we, the Palestinians, and I, we have a big right, right to independence, right to freedom. And as Martin Luther Jr. said, a right delayed is a right denied. Our right has been delayed, and I hope the whole world does not deny us this right. We have the right to exist in freedom, to have our independent sovereign state in accordance with the international law. Israel at this stage has behaved like no other country of this world. It has defied the international arena. It has defied the international law. It has defied humane, the humane nature of respecting the humanity of the Palestinian people. 
And I, I would like to say this statement by Mahatma Gandhi, to deny people their human rights is to challenge their very humanity. And this is what we have reached. With all the jargons of the politicians and all the jargons of the political world and all the jargons that goes on in the United Nations, we have committed ourselves, our leadership have committed itself to basically follow suit with all the international resolutions in order to achieve a just peace. In order to actually have just peace, Peace, we need to be recognized. Palestine has to be recognized, and it is time to change the modus operandi of the world. The world has to change its modus operandi with regards to dealing with Israel and recognize Palestine at once. This is the only just way of recognizing the humanity of the Palestinian people, and I'm very grateful to you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Nasser, uh, for this intervention and, uh, uh, and for highlighting the plea of the Palestinians in this uh, current situation. And we will move back now to point number two on this agenda. And uh, ah, very happy to have uh, um, representatives from Israeli and Palestinian uh, political life with me uh, and with us today. Mr. Rawi Fatu, Head of Department of Expatriate Affairs from the PLO, and Ms. Aida Tuma from uh, joining us from the Knesset. Uh, Mr. Fatu, uh, what, uh, could you please provide us a PLO perspective of what the European Union can do to support the recognition process and what you see as the main challenges and opportunities now in, and in the upcoming years uh, that we should take with us as a campaign as well. Mr. Fatu, the floor is yours. Remember to unmute yourself, please, sir. Mr. Fatou, you need to unmute yourself. You're still muted. No. Dear friends, thank you very much. And I'm happy to participate to you in this conference in the International Day of, the, of Solidarity with the Palestinian People under the title of recognition of the state of Palestine, a break condition for peace and coexistence. So it is a time to recognize Palestine, a state with East Jerusalem as its capital. Dear friends, the Palestinian people has extended the hand of peace to Israel for so long. Our President Mahmoud Abbas, Abu Mazen, in his last speech in the General Assembly in last September, said, we, the Palestinians, have respected all the relevant international laws, decisions, and UN resolutions, and have reiterated our commitments towards a long-lasting and just peace. Israel, on the other hand, has simply defied the international community and all the UN relevant resolution and refused to implement of all the agreed upon agreements between Israel and the Palestinians. So, how long do we, the Palestinians, have to wait before Palestine is recognized? The Israeli side has been evading all possible routes towards fulfilling a long-lasting and just peace based upon international laws. Israel is destroying any opportunity for peace with us. <clears throat> Israel is relentless in defying the international laws and numerous UN resolutions. The Israeli sequential governments are forever engaging in the following. First, illegally confiscating Palestine land illegally erecting settlements while demolishing Palestinian homes and livelihoods, 
illegally displacing and uprooting Palestinians from Jerusalem and its neighborhoods, illegally imposing administrative detention measures on innocent Palestinian civilians, including women and children, restricting Palestinians from a free movement and the travel, inhuman the treatment of our Palestinian prisoners and detainees, denying them of the simple human rights, illegally holds onto the PNA taxes and suffocates us from our own collected national funds, the ongoing oppression, intimidation, and the cruelty by Israeli against the Palestinian has to stop. It is simply against all the human rights. Our request for a free Palestine has to be answered. We aspire for comprehensive, just, and everlasting peace. Whereas Israel aspires for expanding and the occupation, oppression, and the intimidation on Jerusalem. East Jerusalem is our capital city. And we totally reject any modification to this historical, demographical, and geographical fact in Jerusalem. The ongoing targeting of the Jerusalem neighborhood and suburbs of Sheikh Jarrah, Silwan, and the Isawiyah and the others by hostile and savage and barbaric settlers amount to war crimes. The folks of Israeli settlers backed by the Israeli army continue to target the northern civilian residents of those neighborhoods with live fire. This has to stop. In recent days, we were choked and dismayed by Israel's designation of six Palestinian rights defenders after a terrorist organization. We firmly denounce this step against these civil society organizations, which are active with the difficult group within the Palestine society including women and children, and which defend the human rights of Palestinian prisoners and detainees in Israeli prisons. We appeal to the EU to take a firm position against the decision of the Israeli Ministry of Defense. Furthermore, we wish to stress the fact that these institutions many of which receive EU support, are crucial for livelihood of many Palestinians who are living in dire conditions due to the Israeli occupation. This brings me to the very serious Israeli inhuman, barbaric, barbaric and most brutal treatment of the Palestinian prisoners and detainees in administrative detentions. Our prisoners are exposed to the worst forms of a torture, prolonged solitary confinement that sometimes lasts for years and the provision of the most basic human rights. This has to stop immediately, dear friend. Today, the peace process is at a dead end. The, the negotiation failed. To sit or to reach to the state of Palestine, live side by side with Israeli because the Israeli government rejected the two-state two solution. So to oblige Israel to abide with 
the international law. and UN resolutions, and with all agreed upon agreements with PLO, the international community should recognize the independent state of Palestine with East Jerusalem as its capital. So it is the time to, to, to recognize the state of Palestine. Thank you all. Thank you very much for participating in this conference. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fatou, for your intervention and your words. Um, it is my pleasure now to give the floor to Ms. Aida Tuma, speaking to us from the Knesset. Uh, Aida, uh, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, first of all, for holding this event. I think uh, the Palestinian people uh, uh, did not need uh, really an international Solidarity Day like these days, uh, the whole situation is going into uh, more and more difficulties and the Palestinian people are suffering under the, um, we can say occupation, but more the apartheid regime that is going uh, more and more uh, to be established in a very a clear way under the Israeli government. Uh, I think that uh, uh, we can uh, say that these are difficult days because also part of the equation that uh, is happening on one hand, we can see that uh, the new Israeli government uh, is marketing itself in the world under the claim of being a change government. Uh, as if uh, all the uh, policies that uh, used to deprive the Palestinian people from the right of liberation and establishing a Palestinian state is going to change. Although internally, this government has been uh, saying from the beginning that because it is a government that have from within balances between right and, and so-called left, uh, while the uh, prime minister and the uh, so-called uh, minister of defense are coming from the, and, and the, the uh, minister of law are coming from a very ultra right wing ideology that still believe of uh, the uh, whole, uh, what is called the great Israel land. Uh, and on the other hand, you have merits and uh, an Arab um, united uh, list inside this government. This balance is actually paralyzing this government from doing any step toward solving the problem or toward starting real negotiation to establish the Palestinian state. But it is not paralyzing the plans of uh, enlarging the settlements and sort of, uh, uh, confiscating Palestinian land and actually deepening the occupation more and more, as you can see in different steps that were taken later, uh, uh, let, later in the, lately uh, by uh, the government. Uh, the decision to uh, start building 3,300 uh, units in the settlements by this change, so-called change government. Uh, the atrocities and the violence of the um, uh, settlers against the Palestinian people that is happening almost every day under uh, many times under the eyes of the uh, 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 occupation army or even escorted by the Oc uh, occupation army uh, while they are burning uh, fields and uh, uh, attacking homes and uh, 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 avoiding Palestinians from uh, uh, doing their olive harvest or any kind of agriculture in the, uh, uh, their uh, villages. The plans of evacuating uh, 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 whole neighborhoods in Jerusalem are, uh, are under action these days and still under this government. So on one hand, they are saying they are because of the 
different balance inside this government that it is bringing together right wing and so called left wing or center uh, 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 parties, they are not able to go forward to end the occupation. This is a big lie. And I think the world should be understanding that the real a, a practice that this government is practicing is deepening the occupation and blocking any possibility of going forward toward the two-state solution. The two-state solution is almost vanishing day after day and continuing thinking that this government is going to bring any kind of change in this situation. I think it's a big illusion. We need to understand that this government, if it is directly or indirect is deepening the apartheid regime and trying to annex de facto the uh, Palestinian uh, uh, land. First of all, I think in the solidarity, international solidarity day with the Palestinian people, we should be aware that real solidarity as we saw it in last May, when um, there was a big change that suddenly brought the Palestinian issue, Jerusalem, Sheikh Jarrah, into the heart of the solidarity movement and brought uh, a lot of activities that even the Israeli government did not expect it at that point. They thought that they criminalized already not only the Palestinian resistance, if it is armed resistance or popular resistance, they are going forward now and declaring even human rights activities. They want to criminalize human rights activities by declaring the six organizations, human rights organizations, Al Haq and the Damir and the other organizations as a, a terror activism. I think it's about time to stand up and say very clearly that these occupation uh, 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 decisions are not accepted in the whole world and to start activating the solidarity by putting pressure on the uh, 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 European governments and on the a United States administration to take an action that hold this Israeli government responsible for its activities and for it is this, its decisions. It is not accepted at all to go uh, on the decision of uh, to, to, to go through the decision of criminalizing the actions of the six organizations, the human rights organization, as it is as if it is another decision made by the occupation. It's not only another decision. It is an action to criminalize the human rights activism um, in the uh, Palestinian community and a real uh, 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 action to destroy the, act the, the uh, 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 infrastructure of the uh, uh, civil rights movements or in the a, sorry, a human rights movement in the, the Palestinian human rights uh, movement and the grassroots organization. This is another step to try. They are uh, uh, blocking the uh, taxes from getting to the uh, PLO and to the uh, PMA in, 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 in a very systematic way to uh, 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 weaken the uh, 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 authority and to weaken the possibility of leading a real uh, um, uh, struggle against the occupation. They are separating and continuing to uh, 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 work on the um, a division of the Palestinian people between Gaza and the West Bank, Hamas and Fatah, and the occupation is uh, uh, happy to continue this division. On the other hand, they are now, they want to weaken also the uh, 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 civil uh, uh, society among the Palestinians in order to start dealing with the Palestinians as individuals and not as people who are looking for 
the right of self-determination. These days, we have to accelerate and to uh, 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 start a new way of action of solidarity with the Palestinian people. It has to come by pressure coming from the European uh, uh, parliaments, the European governments and the United States on the Israeli government to stop its atrocities. And I think it's about time to reveal in more extensive way the crimes committed against the Palestinian people because suddenly there is an attempt to uh, a market the uh, new Israeli government as if it is a peace-loving government. This is not the situation. This government is continuing the same policy that existed in the government uh, led by Netanyahu, but this time with the stamp of kosher by merits and the uh, uh, Arab United list. So we have to be uh, aware of that. We have to work more extensively to reveal this and to solidarate with the Palestinian people until when they, I hope very soon, we will be able to celebrate the establishment on the ground of the Palestinian uh, 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 state nearby the state of Israel with a Jeru East Jerusalem as it is capital. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Aida, for your intervention and for joining us today uh, at this uh, conference. Uh, I'm really I... sorry for the delay and for the fact that I have to run. We are in uh, during sessions in the Knesset, in the parliament. So I'm really sorry. I wish you all the luck and thank you, comrades. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you uh, for joining us and good luck uh, in, uh, with debates in the Knesset. Eh? Thank you. Uh, and thank you for, for today. We are now uh, approaching the closing of, of the conference today. And I think um, one of the key efforts to deter broad mobilization and support for recognizing the state of Palestine is to convince politicians and governments in Europe that this is a small and, and non-important movement, but we are few one-sided, myopic and possibly radical. Our gathering today demonstrates the opposite, that we are many, from national parliamentarians and parliament, European civil society, workers in Europe and the world, progressive forces in Israel, Palestine, and in the diaspora. And seeing this, uh, I think, should give us all the courage and self-esteem uh, to continue, the perseverance to advance together. Uh, and I now turn to, to our uh, MAPs present to comment on the testimonies shared and, and what they believe might be the, the following steps that the European parliament, the progressive forces can take and what we could do together to convince the member states uh, who are uh, still uh, hesitating to uh, recognize the state of Palestine. I'll, I'll give, uh, we'll stick to the same order as before. So I'll give the first, uh, first I'll give the floor to Manu, then Evan and then Margrethe. Uh, and please, uh, you have uh, two to three minutes for your final statements and, and comments on what has been discussed, uh, Manu. Eh, la palabra es tuya, compañero. Are you with us? Manu is. Then I'll move directly to Evin. Evin, please. Thank you very much um, again, uh, Mikel, and thanks to everybody who have uh, taken part in this um, discussion. Uh, and uh, everybody who have been um, addressing uh, this um, uh, this meeting. Um, and I also once again, want to thank you, Mikael, for, to you and Solidar to uh, gather all uh, of us uh, and uh, everybody else uh, to, uh, to join forces in this very important uh, struggle uh, for a two-state solution for a free Palestine. Um, and uh, to, uh, and um, uh, for uh, also revitalizing the struggle for um, the uh, recognition as an important part, of course, for the two-state solution. Uh, I agree. I think it was uh, my colleague Margaret in the beginning who said that uh, it's not enough just to recognize, and I totally agree on it, but even though I think that recognition per se is a very important step uh, toward, uh, towards revitalizing uh, the discussion for a two-state uh, solution. 
I will myself um, during next year be drafting recommendations on behalf of the Committee of Foreign Affairs in the Parliament uh, to the Commission and the Council on the EU relations um, with uh, Palestine. And I think one of the important points there is from the side of the EU to take a shared responsibility and recognize all the 27 member states, of course, but also the European Union as uh, an institution. The European Parliament already back in 2014, I think it was, through a non-binding uh, resolution um, uh, uh, push uh, or took decision on a recognition according to the 67 borders with, of course, um, uh, Jerusalem as the capital of both countries, East Jerusalem, uh, Palestine, West Jerusalem, um, Israel. Um, I think uh, that one of the first imp important step, at least from the side of um, us in the European Union will, will be to push the seven countries whom national parliaments have uh, asked for recognition to, uh, to ensure uh, and to push uh, the government also to do what their elect, uh, elected parliamentarians have demanded them to do. Uh, that would mean that we would have even more EU member states who would um, demand a recognition, who would have uh, recognized and demand a recognition. In that way, also the European Union could take the leadership um, globally. So that's one of the most important things, at, at least ahead for us. And I promise to take my share of responsibility as the standing rapporteur for the parliament with the relations for Palestine uh, to in the capacity that I can uh, to, uh, to ensure that the parliament stands up for the decision we take 2014 and demands equally from the commission and the council and the member states. Once again, thank you very much for you to initiating this and thanks to everybody for joining forces. Thank you very much, Avin, and uh, for joining us. And of course, you can continue to count on our support for whatever you need in the parliament to advance in your respective roles. Uh, Mano, uh, I'll, I'll give the floor to you then before uh, Margrethe, some final words. So, Mano, por favor, la palabra es tuya. Bueno, disculpad, es que antes estaba, tenía un problemita técnico, ¿no? No he podido conectarme. No, bueno, yo un poco creo que ya la compañera. La compañera bien ha, ha planteado todo. Deciros que... Uy, a ver dónde está esto. Ahora, perdón. Eh, deciros que desde luego desde la, la Delegación de Relaciones con Palestina vamos a trabajar eh, y nos pondremos a vuestra disposición para trabajar de forma eficaz y coordinada eh, en, en, para conseguir lo antes posible este este objetivo de la, del reconocimiento de, de, del Estado palestino, un tema que, como ya, ve, ya, ya han dicho otros compañeros antes, no es suficiente, por supuesto, no es suficiente. Recognition is not enough, but uh, this is something that we have to do now, uh, that we have to do now, and uh, we should have uh, uh, achieved it. Evine a dit. We have to keep on working the, with there are several countries, uh, with the parliaments, uh, with the parliaments uh, having recognized the, the Palestinian state without uh, being uh, it done by the government. So, so I think that we have to uh, uh, to put pressure on these governments, and also we have to uh, we have to keep on working in order to uh, to uh, to put pressure on Israel. And that's why we uh, need uh, the support by the European Union, and uh, uh, so. So uh, we, uh, uh, in our opinion, uh, there is the willingness to do this. Uh, we have uh, some pressure tools. Uh, so I would like to thank you for organizing this webinar. We are available in order to help you. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much, Manu. Uh, Margrethe, I'll give you yes. some final comments. Yes, thank you very much. And thank you for this conference again. And I, you know, I'm so focused what to do now. Uh, we, it's not enough to cry. Uh, we've been crying now for 60 years. Now we need to act. And uh, let me just uh, propose something which, which can be done. Uh, I think that recognition is very important. Uh, and there I would like to quote again what Jan Verug said uh, just uh, here that uh, recognition uh, is uh, the way to peace, not the opposite way around. And that should be reiterated. 
But then we have to activate our, our member states government. And again, I call for take contact to the Palestinians in your own country uh, as far as you can. Take contact to local parliamentarians to put questions and and all you know try to to, to network between uh, uh, members of parliament in our different countries so they can put these questions to the government. All the governments has formally at least paid uh, contribute to the not paid uh, trust to the two state solution, but are doing close to nothing. And that that could be emphasized much stronger. And if it's done a little bit more together, I think it could even have, it cannot be done at the uh, external service because they were just sitting as scared for a while, waiting for some uni unanimous position to occur, which of course will not happen, but it, can, it should be done in the member states and we could do much more on networking. And then I'll just, <clears throat> just tell you, and one thing more, when you talk about the two-state ev uh, evading, please remember bulldozers can be used for good purposes too. And so we should still go for the uh, 67 borders, Jerusalem, and of course it can be done if the political will, which is the only thing we need there, the, is there. And political will is a renewable resource, please remember. So we could mobilize this again. And then just tell you that today this afternoon at uh, 2.45, there's a, uh, uh, a, a conference or a slot in, a, in uh, the subcommittee for human rights, DRA, well, there is a slot on Palestine, Israel, Palestine. So you could go in there if you would follow it. I might get the floor, uh, you know, if the, the chair will allow me. And I will also tell uh, those of you who are in, uh, in Israel, Palestine now, there will be a draft delegation. I won't be there, but we have good people there. There will be a draft delegation to Israel, Palestine before Christmas. So please also take this opportunity that we can mobilize uh, if you know, because you get tired of crying, you need to act. At least I'm. Uh, I need to act. I have to find ways now, uh, and uh, although it's to all good reasons for crying, then we should yes find our the frontier and what to do now and what to do next and do something real. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Margrethe, uh, and thank you to the MMPs uh, now working within the uh, DEPAL committee and joining us today. Eh? Margrethe, uh, Socialist Democrats group from Denmark, Evin Incher, uh, Socialist Democrat groups from Sweden, and Manu Pineda. Uh, no, I'm from, from left of Social Democrats. I'd be happy to say the Social Democrats are very weak for the moment. They are in government and do is close, close to nothing. And they had to have a kick in the air. Yes. So, with other words, Margrethe is from the Greens. <laughs> Apologies. Apologies. Mano Pineda, then I'll, I'm, now I'm a bit scared, eh? But from GUE and Spain. Si, correcto? Wonderful. My apologies. Now, no, mente, I, realmente hemos cambiado de nombre recientemente. Nos actually, we, cha we changed the no name, uh, Telef, pero... Uh, we do did not update uh, no, that's true thank you uh, and now it's my pleasure uh, to give the final uh, words to um, a good friend and ally uh, miss luisa morgantini former vice president of the european parliament on behalf of the campaign uh, luisa uh, you have uh, the floor and I want to thank you all uh, for joining uh, on, on behalf of Solidar. My name is Mika Lehi, Secretary General. I look forward to seeing you all again in our future and shared work to these efforts, both uh, from the diaspora within Europe and from Palestine and Israel. This is a joint effort or no effort at all. Luisa Morgantini, uh, please, the floor is yours. Grazie moltissimo. È stato veramente un immenso piacere e coinvolgimento ascoltare tutti quanti. Um, È un ringraziamento. E ho seguito. Va a Solidar per, e a tutti quelli che hanno collaborato e contribuito a formare questa coalizione europea che è estremamente importante perché al suo interno ha voci, politiche, organizzazioni, associazioni diverse ma unite in un unico punto sul quale siamo veramente uniti, 
che è appunto il riconoscimento dello Stato di Palestina, che non è solo simbolico, perché cambia anche appunto, come diceva credo qualcuno degli intervenuti, cambia il rapporto anche giuridico rispetto al fatto che appunto Israele non occupa più dei territori, ma occupa uno Stato e quindi cambia anche nella sostanza, per cui è importantissimo questo, questo fatto che noi andiamo avanti chiedendo il riconoscimento dello Stato di Palestina a tutti, come dicevano anche sia Margaret che, che Manu che Evin, in realtà noi dobbiamo andare avanti a continuare a fare pressioni sui governi locali, nazionali, europei, affinché facciano questo salto, perché non è soltanto ora. In realtà l'Europa ha cominciato a parlare, a riconoscere la Palestina nel 1980 e sinceramente dopo 54 anni più di occupazione militare, di 70 anni di dispossesso della terra palestinese, noi siamo ancora qui a chiedere due popoli, due stati, senza però fare sufficienti pressioni affinché questo avvenga. Non possiamo nascondere la verità. Il piano di Israele non è soltanto l'ingiustizia, la violenza perpetrata nei confronti del popolo palestinese, che soffre ma è anche un popolo che ha dignità e resiste e quando parlo di resistenza non parlo dei rockets buttati su, eh, sulle città, perché questa non è resistenza, non fa parte della legalità internazionale. Parlo dei milioni di Gandhi che ci sono in Palestina, dei milioni di Gandhi che ogni giorno resistono e respirano. Sì, perché anche respirare per i palestinesi è un problema. Quindi noi con questa coalizione stiamo facendo, io credo, un grande lavoro di tenere insieme così tante forze che dicono con chiarezza c'è una disparità di forze. Non, sono, non è uguale essere un paese occupante, lo ricordava Ilan Baru, è un paese occupato. Noi questo dobbiamo saperlo con certezza e capire che il piano del nuovo governo israeliano, ma ormai va avanti da vent'anni e più, anche prima, ma adesso con più chiarezza, è un piano di colonizzazione e che pratica una parte e che i coloni oggi non servono solo l'interesse dei coloni, eh, i coloni sono usati anche dalla politica dei governi israeliani per prendere sempre più territori e rendere meno possibile l'autodeterminazione del popolo palestinese. La violenza dei coloni è una cosa che noi dobbiamo sempre tenere in mente. Ogni giorno vi è accanto alle colonie aumentate da parte di Israele, eh, con la politica di evacuazione della Valle del Giordano, delle colline di Sud di Ebron, i coloni però avanzano con un'aggressione che fa male ad Israele, anche non fa male soltanto in primo luogo ai palestinesi. Ecco, quindi questa nostra coalizione che è così importante, oggi per esempio abbiamo anche sentito la voce di Gestrit che sta negli USA ed è così importante che noi riusciamo a costruire e fare andare avanti quotidianamente eh, questa lotta, pressione per il riconoscimento dello Stato di Palestina, ma anche tentare di costruire un assetto internazionale perché quello che succede negli Stati Uniti è estremamente importante. La voce dei Jewish for Peace, di G Street e degli, dei palestinesi che sono anche negli Stati Uniti e delle forze poche ancora democratiche nel congresso sono estremamente importanti. Quindi io credo che da questa giornata noi dobbiamo fare in modo di dare continuità, non una volta all'anno il 29 di, no di novembre perché è la giornata ONU, ma dare continuità ogni giorno con le azioni che faremo come coalizione in Italia, in Francia, in Spagna, in Belgio, ma anche appunto allargando la nostra coalizione a, a livello internazionale. Quindi 
un grazie davvero, credo di aver terminato il mio tempo, un grazie davvero grande a tutti quelli che hanno e quelli che hanno partecipato perché eh, c'è bisogno davvero di un impegno grande e di una solidità immensa perché un po' di giustizia possa trionfare perché io credo che quello che è in, in discussione oggi è anche la nostra democrazia perché se noi non riusciamo a contribuire alla soluzione di due popoli, due stati, alla libertà e all'autodeterminazione e la sicurezza sia per Palestina e Israele, in realtà la nostra democrazia salta. E se non siamo coerenti con i nostri principi eh, sui diritti e la legalità internazionale, eh, beh, non siamo coerenti, siamo noi stessi responsabili di quello che succede in Palestina, in Israele e di quello che succede anche in Europa. Quindi grazie davvero e non ci perdiamo, stringiamo forte le mani e insieme, sì, come dicevano prima, nessuna disperazione, non possiamo permetterci il lusso dell'impotenza perché la giustizia e la libertà sono la nostra strada. Grazie. Grazie Luisa, grazie a tutti, thank you all for coming, eh, Giorgio, Esmeralda, Ilan, eh, Raui, eh, Margrethe, everyone, thank you so much for coming, thank you so much for joining this campaign, let's continue to support, engage and put pressure on national parliaments to do their bit in recognizing the state of Palestine, joining the more than 140 countries who already did so. Uh, and for the EU to fulfill its role in this regard. Thank you all. Look forward to continue our work together. Uh, all the very best. On behalf of Solidar, we're very happy to have you, to host you, to be part of this campaign. Uh, thank you all. And, and hopefully soon, uh, I'll see you all soon. <laughs>